The 74th Primetime Emmy Awards took place on September 12, 2022 at the Microsoft Theatre in Los Angeles, California. The show honours the best in American primetime television programming from June 1, 2021 until May 31, 2022, as chosen by the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. The award ceremony was held live and was preceded by the 74th Primetime Creative Arts Emmy Awards on September 3rd and 4th at the Microsoft Theatre in downtown Los Angeles, California. The ceremony was broadcast in the United States on NBC and Peacock, occurring on a Monday to accommodate NBC's Sunday night football coverage. Nominations were announced on July 12, 2022. The ceremony was produced through Dun and & Dusted and Hudlin Entertainment and was directed by Hamish Hamilton. Keenan Thompson served as the host for the event. This was the first time in two years that the ceremony returned to the Microsoft Theatre in downtown Los Angeles because of the COVID-19 pandemic and also the first time that a full audience was in attendance. On August 9, 2022, it was announced that Kenan Thompson would host the ceremony. The producers reportedly approached Chris Rock and Dwayne Johnson to host the ceremony, but had no success. NBC late-night hosts Jimmy Fallon and Seth Meyers had both passed being Emmy hosts, were also reportedly uninterested in the role this year. At one stage, it was even considered having a hostless ceremony, but of course this was later changed in favour of getting Kenan Thompson to host the event. In December 2021, Atlas and the National Academy of Television, Arts and Science announced that major realignment of the Emmy Award ceremonies. This was in response to the growth of streaming television, which blurred the lines in determining which shows should fall under the daytime or primetime Emmys. The two ceremonies' scopes will now revolve around factors such as the themes and frequency of such programming, rather than strictly daytime showings. Several other rule changes were also implemented for the ceremony. Most notably, programs will no longer be categorized as dramas or comedies based on runtime. Instead, producers will determine whether their programs are submitted, with the Television Academy reserving the right to review decisions. Now let's get to the winners. Firstly, Outstanding Comedy Series went to Ted Lasso, the American sports comedy drama television series. Developed by Jason Sudeikis, which of course is based on the character of an American football coach coming across to England to coach a soccer team. Now this win was not a surprise as Ted Lasso has been heavily applauded by the critics. In saying that though, when I look at the nominations, personally I wouldn't have mind Marvelous Mrs. Maisel winning as I absolutely adore that show. Or even Only Murders in the Building. I just think those two shows stand out a little bit more than Ted Lasso. In saying that though, still a good show. In the Outstanding Drama Series category, Succession took home the main prize, which doesn't surprise me in the least, as it is an absolutely phenomenal show. Now, for those of you that don't know the show Succession, it's an American satirical black comedy drama television series that, of course, fo focuses on the royal family, a dysfunctional owners of the Waystar Roy Company, a global media and entertainment conglomerate. Now, all the members of the family are fighting for control and the future of the company amidst the uncertainty about the health of the family's patriarch, Logan Roy, played here by the superb Brian Cox. For me, Succession really does deserve this award as it is one of the best shows on television. In saying that though, some of the other shows in the category, for example Severance, Squid Game, Stranger Things and Yellow Jackets, definitely stood out for me as some of the best drama series from the last year. In the Outstanding Limited or Anthology series category, The White Lotus took the top prize, which didn't surprise me as it really was a unique and original series. The show follows the guests and employees of the fictional White Lotus resort chain, whose stay becomes affected by their various dysfunctions. Some other shout-outs had to of course be Dope Sick, the show that revolves around America's opioid crisis. A really hard-hitting and excellent drama. Of course, and based entirely on fact. Another fantastic show had to be Pam and Tommy, all about Pamela Anderson and Tommy Lee's marriage and all the wild stories that came along with it, including the theft and later releasing of their private sex tape. Once again, and without surprise, the outstanding variety talk series went, of course, to my particular favourite, Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, a show that I never miss and thoroughly enjoy as John tackles the weekly issues in politics, entertainment and sport with his unique cutting-edge style of humour that never really quite holds back. The show tackles hard-hitting subjects around the world and John never shies away from telling you what he really thinks of something. The show is very liberal in its formatting, but what I do love about it is that in doing all of this and tackling some of the most serious subjects in the world, it does it with a wry smile and a sense of humour. Now let's turn to the acting categories. Our standing lead actor in the comedy series went to Jason Sudeikis for playing Ted Lasso in the same show. But one of the standouts for me has to be both Steve Martin and Martin Short and Only Murders in the Building. They're absolutely fantastic in that show, as well as, of course, Bill Hader in Barry. Jean Smart won for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Comedy Series, but for me the standout had to be Rachel Brosnian in Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. I just think it's an outstanding performance in every season. 
Outstanding lead actor in a drama series was deservedly given to Lee Jung Jae from Squid Game. I think he thoroughly deserved this reward, with a big shout out, of course, having to go to Brian Cox in succession. I was over the moon to see Zendaya get the win for playing Rue Bennett in Euphoria for Best Lead Actress in a Drama Series. She fully, fully deserves this in what was an epic performance, particularly in this last season. I definitely have to give a shout out though to Melanie Lelinsky in Yellow Jackets, also a superb performance. As well as Jodie Comer as Villanelle in Killing Eve's last season. Outstanding leading actor in a limited series or anthology went, of course, to Michael Keaton for Dr. Samuel Phoenix in Dope Sick, a superb performance by the veteran actor. Some of the shout-outs, though, had to be Colin Firth in The Staircase, playing Michael Peterson, as well as Andrew Garfield in Under the Banner of Heaven. And, of course, who can forget Sebastian Stan as Tommy Lee in Pam and Tommy, an outstanding performance. Outstanding leading actress went to Amanda Siegfried in The Dropout, playing Elizabeth Holmes. Some shout-outs, though, for me had to be Tony Collette in The Staircase, playing Catherine Peterson. Lily James, who is unrecognisable as Pamela Anderson in Pam and Tommy. And the wonderful Sarah Paulson as Linda Tripp in Impeachment, American Crime Story. Outstanding supporting actor in a comedy series went to Brett Goldstein for Roy Kent in Ted Lasso. And definitely one of the shout-outs has to be Tony Shalob in Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. With Cheryl Reed Ralph winning for uh, Abbott Elementary in the Supporting Actress category, definitely another one of the shout-outs has to be Alec Bornstein in Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Outstanding Supporting Actor in a Drama Series went to Matthew McFadden for his role as Tom in Succession. One of the shout-outs that has to be, for me, John Totoro and Christopher Walken in Severance. Julie Garner won for Ruth Langmore in Ozark in the Outstanding Supporting Actress category for Drama, with definitely shout-outs going to meet for Patricia Arquette as in Severance, Christina Ricci in Yellow Jackets, and of course, Sydney Sweeney in Euphoria. For Outstanding Supporting Actor in a Limited or Anthology series, it went to Murray Bartlett from The White Lotus, of course playing Amont, the hotel manager at The White Lotus, and who can forget the infamous scene in the last episode. Some notable performances in this category have to include Will Poulter as Billy Cutler in Dopesick, Peter Sarsgaard as Rick Mountcastle in Dopesick, and Michael Sturmberg as Richard Sackler in Dopesick. And Jennifer Coolidge deservedly won for Best Supporting Actress in a Limited or Anthology Series for playing Tanya McCoy in The White Lotus. The one shout-out has to go to me for Catelyn Dever as Betsy Mellum in Dopesick, an absolutely beautiful performance. Overall, the big winner from the night was the White Lotus, with 10 wins overall in all the categories, with Euphoria and Squid Game taking 6 each. Now I must say, none of the winners really surprised me, although some of them I might have disagreed with. You can't give everybody an award, and as I always say with these shows, just getting a nomination sometimes is reward enough. Another fantastic year, phenomenal TV shows, and I look forward to seeing what the next year brings us.